The first time you open up paint.net, your board should look like this. It is not necessary for you to have history or layers on the board, so the best thing you can do is turn them off. This bar on the left are your tools. And I'm going to run through them a little bit at a time. But the first thing you do is open a file and choose a picture to do some photoshopping on. And here we have quite a classic. It's called Coneheads from Saturday Night Live. Now the first tool I'm going to show you to use is called the lasso. Now what you do is you left click it and you drag it to any shape you would like. And once you're done dragging a complete shape, you release and then hit delete on your computer. And voila, it will disappear. The second example is drawing a shape and right-clicking it to drag it and put it where you would like it to be. And once again, you click no more and you go to delete and it will disappear. Now the lasso is good for cutting out sections which are not relevant to your picture. Then you can draw another shape. Now the idea is to line up the edge and then move it to where it fits exactly where you would like to erase by right clicking as you drag. The next tool is the circle. Now you start anywhere you'd like on the photo and you drag it and you shape it to what you'd like the shape of your circle to be and move it where you want it. Now you can go to image and click crop to select it. The only thing that will appear is within that circle and there you have a nice cameo of Mrs. Conehead. You can save it and I will show you how to save that in a short few steps from now. But the greatest tool you have here is that little blue arrow pointing to the left which takes you to undoing your last move. And voila you are back to where you were. The next tool is the eraser. The numbers you click determine the size of the circle which will be erased and you will see it you click and voila now that blue panel up there was set at 75 percent now it's set at a hundred percent and you will see a much sharper erasure now if you go back to that blue bar and set it at one percent and click you'll see the difference you see how the edge is faded? That'll come in handy later. Now you go back to the size of the eraser and choose whatever size you might think will fit better. That's at 1%. And now we'll go 99%. And you see it's a much cleaner, much sharper edge. The next tool is the paint bucket. Now, since I'm doing a close-up of the toolbar, I ran off the screen to pick a color on the other panel which you saw at the beginning of this video. And I chose a color. I come back with the bucket and I click it and the color will appear. Voila. Now I've created another circle and I've run back to the bucket
And when I bring the bucket to where the circle is outlined, it will fill only that circle. Once you've done something like this, you have to erase that outline. And the best way to do that is to run back to the lariat and click it somewhere off the photograph the outline will disappear. Now I pick up the paintbrush and I can draw. And as you see, the blue line is set at 98%. Now I'm going to change the setting to 2% and increase the size of the brush where you will see it is a much larger circle and now it doesn't have such a defined edge. Now you may notice I did some scribbling here which is not necessary for you to see how I did it because it's the same process. Using the lasso again, you see that you can go off of the picture and it follows the line. You hit delete and it's gone. Back to the circle, move it where you want, and now instead of crop to image, simply hit delete. A little more erasing. And now I'm going to go back to the bucket, and since it's preloaded with a color, all I have to do is click it in the area I want it to appear. And now I can go off screen and just choose another color, and that area I just filled with orange will fill with the color I choose. Now I'm just going to choose another color, the size of the paintbrush, and I'm going to draw some pretty thick heavy black lines and I'll show you why in a second. And now I'm going to go to the magic wand. It's an incredible little device and you'll see just what it does. As you click an area and hit delete it will clean up the area. Next we're going to use the eyedropper. You place it over a color on your picture, click it, and now this will be the color that will fill your bucket. We're going to go with a little gray right now. And how's about we choose a little flesh tone color. Go to the bucket and drop it. Now the hand just simply allows you to move the picture around on the palette. Now just a little photo magic here and evidence of the undo button. And we're back to the original picture. Now I'm going to show you some actual photoshopping. Choose a picture. And as we use the circle, we can now use the rectangle in the same process. Click Delete. And as with the circle, you can move it around by right clicking until you get the final shape you want. And Delete. Now we're going to go back to the eraser, the size of the eraser. Oops, just a little bit too small. Let's get larger.
and clean up to the edge of what you want to see. Now you may have noticed As the circle goes off of the picture, the erasing circle will disappear. And there is a simple solution to that. Make the erasing circle smaller. Do some cleaning up edges. But to get those really tight spots, all you have to do is reduce the size of your picture and clean it up. Now next we're going to go to the lasso to clean up those tight little areas under the eagle's white feathers. And hit delete. Now, as you might have noticed, there's an area where the outline leads into the eagle's face, and that's a no-no. The next step is to pay attention to where that leak is going through. Get your eraser and block the area where it's leaking through. Right there it is. Get your eraser. Get the right size. And block the color from bleeding through. Go back to the magic wand. No more bleed through. Inspect your picture. Use the magic wand to clean up some edges. And you can use the eraser to do the same thing. Use the magic wand to inspect your edges. And here's a very good example of it. Enlarge your picture, inspect it, and as you will see that there are some lines in there, some pixels that shouldn't be in the picture. It's no big deal, but it may ruin a very good work of art here. So so the next thing you have to do is go back a step to get rid of the outline. Then you can take your eraser and clean up those bad spots. Inspect your picture. Happy with it? Save file as. Name it. The most important thing, though, is to choose a PNG. Because if you don't choose PNG, your background will always be white and it will always appear. Click OK. Ta da. Open another file. Let's choose the flag. And now that you have a new palette to work with, you go to Layers, 
and import file. Drop the eagle on it. Move the eagle, adjust the eagle, put it where you want it. And of course you don't want to see no body underneath the feather, so you move it where it fits appropriately. Save file, PNG, name it something different. And save. Now it's going to ask you to flatten it because it's more than one layer and it's done. Now you have to reopen that file. I'm going to use the eyedropper here. Note the color in the upper left hand corner of the color palette will change as you click the dropper. Now, you click the T for text, decide where you're going to put it, and begin to type. And once you're happy with what you've typed, you may not be happy with the font, so you will choose a different font and or size, and I always Click bold as well. Now, see, it doesn't quite fit. I'm not happy with the color by the way it blends in the background. I can make it fit better by centering it. Now, choose a color that stands out. The fun thing about this is if you're recording it, it's quite entertaining to watch the colors change. As I said, find the color that stands out, save file as, click, and voila! Now we're going to get into a little more detailing of photoshopping choose a file. Ah, there's a favorite. Anderson Pooper. Now I want his head. I want Anderson Pooper's head. So I use the square. And choose crop to select it. Enlarge it so you can see it. Best to start with an eraser. Clicking it one eraser at a time works best because if you try to run around the outline, it's it will appear I make a mistake and take too much of his head off, but that's easy enough to fix by clicking back. And you just take some of the unused portion off. Click and clean up edges. And when you get to really tight spots, you want to change the size of the eraser. Enlarge the picture to see exactly where you have to erase. And when you get into really tight spots, reduce the size of the eraser and clean them up. You can also use the lasso to clean up edges appropriately.
and some teeny tiny erasers help in the finest of areas. You can check for imperfections using the magic wand. And once you're satisfied with your Anderson pooper head, being the perfectionist I am, I'm never actually satisfied with my Anderson pooper head. And once I am, then it's a matter of click and save, PNG, rename it, and save it. Now what are we going to put him on? Let's go find something. Ah, there's a good one. And just because it's used doesn't mean I cannot use it again. Using the rectangle, we will erase the section that we won't be needing. Now layer. And Anderson Pooper is now the snake. Move it, adjust it, shape it, put it where you want it to be. Kind of make it all line up. Going to use the eraser. We're going to reduce. And this way, as you saw earlier, it will fade. And the only thing that you can do work on now is the layer you just put on. And here's an example of what happens when you use a smaller percentage. Inspect it, improve it, and I move it around just to make sure I'm happy with the fade. And sometimes I just like to play with his head. Satisfied. Save file as. And flatten again. Open a background. Find that perfect file photo for a background. There it is. Layer. Import file. Move it. Adjust it. Put it where you would like it to be. In this case, the snake wouldn't float on the water, so you may want to crop the picture so it looks more natural. Then you click Image, and then Crop to select it. And there you have it. Save, rename, Anderson Pooper Snake Swamp. And this concludes this lesson of Photoshopping 101. And this particular Photoshopping tutorial was made for Ladies of Liberty at Patriot Soapbox Livestream. My pleasure.